Welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I am here to share my May wrap up. And I read 12 items in the month of May. So the first item I want to talk about is Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. This is a novella, and I would call it a post apocalyptic. It, it seems the setting. At first I thought it was alternate history because it seemed to be more of a western setting and then they started talking about technology and I realized that no it's trying to say something tragic has happened in the history as we know it and now things have reverted backwards. And this is not a trope I like. I am not a big fan of dystopia or post-apocalyptic. We live in the world we do and I don't need to see those themes played out in a, oh, this is a fallen world, when I'm like, why do you need a fallen world? Those things are happening here, right now. We have issues with sexism currently. We have issues with people not accepting those of other genders. Why are we setting this in a post-apocalyptic? Like, I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand the appeal for this genre. And I did not realize going into the story that that was the setting. So the main appeal for the story was the librarian's part. So the story follows Esther, who, after her lover has been hung for being an unacceptable woman and a rebel, Esther decides to run away. And she runs away by hiding out in the librarian's wagons. These are traveling librarians who are bringing approved materials to the communities. Upon being discovered, Esther is then integrated into the three librarians, and she finds out that the concept that many communities have about the librarians is false. Sure, they act one way in the communities because they know what the communities expect, but really they embrace who they are while they're on the road and with each other. It's an interesting idea and plot. This book is very theme heavy. And I did like that Esther helped drive a lot of the action, but overall I felt like I was lacking a bigger understanding. But this is a novella, and it did what a novella should do, what a novella needs to do. But what I really see this is setting up this world and this setting for a novel down the road. Whether it's following Esther or not, this world is interesting. Now, something I did not like about this book is it has insta-love, considering Esther's lover has just been murdered. The insta-love was a little too much for me. Overall, I gave this story four stars. So the next book that I finish in the month of May is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. And this is a YA fantasy, and it's set in island kingdoms with magic. And this follows the princess Amora, who on her 18th birthday, has to prove that she can handle the soul magic that is her legacy in front of a crowd of people, in front of her citizens. And depending on how well she does, determines of whether or not she actually is the heir. Omora loses control of her power and is put in jail while her father tries to reason with the citizens to let her try again. But she doesn't know this, and instead accepts the offer of Bastion, a pirate, when he springs her to have her help him on a quest. She takes it as it's an opportunity for her to prove to her people that she can control her magic, and to reunite the kingdom as well, since upon the thing that threw her off on her magic was finding out her father been keeping secrets from her, that a war is brewing, and there's conflict happening, and there's an island that has been destroyed by hurricanes, and she doesn't like the policies that her father has put in place, and she doesn't think that her father is doing enough to take care of those who are hurt. And so, along with wanting to prove that she, she has control of her magic, she also wants to unify her kingdom. She does care about her citizens, which is good in any future ruler, in my opinion. And then with them on this journey is her soon-to-be fiancé, Farrick. Something 
particular about this kingdom is each island has its own magic. And if you practice that magic, you live on that island. And you only can practice one magic. Supposedly, if you try to practice more than one magic, you go insane and you die quickly. So I think this was a really good debut novel. I don't think it was perfect, but it does make me interested to read the second book, which I received a copy through Good a Goodreads giveaway. I really enjoyed Amora. I like how you know, an 18 year old is a really hard age to write, to get the balance right, I think. I think there's many YA authors who write them too young and the many YA authors who write them too old. And with Amora, you got to see a balance. You had some like things where she's learning and some other things where she goes, no, I know I'm good at this and I know that I can do these skills. Or seeing that balance to me, I think was done really well. Now it does have a love triangle because it is a YA. But it was nice that Amora was not trying to lead Farrakh along at all. Both Farrakh and her understand that their relationship is political, and she's resigned to it because his power complements hers. He'll be a good uh, consort, is what the idea is. Farrakh has fallen in love with her, but he's not naive. He realizes that she doesn't love him, and he's willing to accept that because, again, it's a political match. But at the same time, he's willing to let her be who she is. He's run away from the kingdom with her and is helping her fulfill her goals. Obviously, he supports her. But he also, since he's known her for years, he's able to stand up to her when, when she's being foolish or silly. He can say, you're, you're being prideful, or what are you thinking here? I mean, how could you do this? And it's refreshing to have that sort of relationship with a potential love interest, even though we know Amor is not interested at all. Obviously, Bastion is the other love interest. But even getting to see their relationship, it was steps. That was nice to see. It wasn't, she wasn't immediately like, oh, I'm attracted to him. But it was more, oh, I'm getting to know him. At first, I thought he was just, you know, an idiot or... At first, he was just convenient for me to get what I wanted, but he has a good point here. He has some good goals. Oh, hey, look, that's an interesting trait. And it, it was it was a very nice step by step by step. And I really appreciate that Grace took the time to build in that relationship so that when they finally did kiss, you, you were rooting for them. The world building, I think, is also done really well. And I like that Grace takes the time with each island that they stop at. She talks about the differences. She ta she goes into what those powers can do and can influence. Like one of the island has the power to manipulate time. And in one instance, people are using it so they can build things super fast. But in another instance, they're using the power to gamble their life away. And that's I think that was a nice balance of showing the good and the bad of how these powers can work in society. I wish we had a little bit more immersion. Something I wasn't very clear on was the time frame. So Amora had given herself the goal to return to her island by the end of summer, but I was not certain of when she left and how much time that actually was. I don't remember when her birthday was versus the end of summer. So there were some times where the distances between the islands they didn't make sense to me. It seemed like, oh, it's taking us a week from, to go from here to here. And then the distance and the time scale, I didn't understand. And I think it's just, it wasn't, it wasn't presented very clearly. And that made the timeline just a little bit harder to understand overall. So I gave this book four stars and I am looking forward to reading the sequel. So the third item I read was Fugitive Telemetry by Martha Wells, the newest novella for Murderbot, where Murderbot is investigating a murder on the preservation station and has to work with the humans in the security office. From the history we're given, and it seems like they frictioned off of each other when Murderbot first arrived. I am going to link my review here for this since I've already talked more about it, but I just really love Murderbot, and I'm glad that we got another story in the universe, and I hope we get more stories, especially after the novel. I want to know what Murderbot is going to do, and I think Murderbot and Art partnering up can be a lot of fun. And I gave 
Fugitive Telemetry, five stars. Then the fourth thing I finished was Victories Greater Than Death. And this is a YA space opera by Charlie Jane Anders. I was really excited to read this because I read Charlie Jane Anders for the first time last summer and enjoyed her other science fiction. And this was good. It was decent, but I wanted more. The level of detail I got with her first adult science fiction, I wanted that here in a YA. And we got the bones of that. Since doing my single review and having more time to think about it, I really think that this book would have been better split into two. And I know that this is going to be a series going forward, but I feel that we would have then had more time for the characterization that Anders clearly wanted to have in this book. What just was not able to be done in this short book. And I know that she could have nailed it. And instead we got a watered down version because she wanted everyone to feel like a whole complete person. But we didn't have the time to get to know them as whole complete people. And so instead, they feel more one note. At least that was how it felt to me. I think the story was interesting. The villain was magnificent. I would hate to have to face off against him. And each of the worlds we visited, we got a glimpse at further world building. And then with the story, we got some insta love, not my favorite. I gave this book four stars. Like what it did, it did well to the point that we were given. And I just, I want more. I wanted more for this book. And I'm just going to link my video because I talk more about it. I still think that you should go read it though. Like I said, four stars meant I still enjoyed it. It was still good. So please go pick it up. Next I read Fina by Nino Cipri, and this is a novella in their Littenwald universe. And from what I understand, it originally was written to be a standalone. The tagline is, think Ikea with wormholes. The premise is a customer gets lost in a wormhole, so Littenwald sends its two newest employees that are on ship that day to go search for them, and they have a series of adventures. Laid on top of that is these two employees have just recently broken up. So you have that angst going on as well. And I absolutely adore this novella. It was fun. I didn't know I needed it in my life before, but now I have it. And so I was excited to find out that Cipri had written another book in this universe. Sorry, it's a novella, so it's short. Can't really discuss much without giving major spoilers of what happens. And I gave this one five stars. Next, I finished Minimum Wage Magic by Rachel Bach. No, it's by Rachel Aaron. Sorry, Rachel Bach is her science fiction pen name and Rachel Aaron is her fantasy. And then this is an urban fantasy set in the Detroit Free Zone following Opal is a cleaner. Her What she does is she bids on old apartment units or houses, things that either the owner has died or has been evicted. So she purchases the unit and then cleans it out so it would be ready for the next occupant and she gets to sell the stuff that is inside. When she started this, she was making really good money and she was paying on a substantial debt that she owes, but the last few months, she's just had really bad luck. And then at the beginning of the story, she buys a unit and finds a dead body. And the money for her debt is due that Friday, but she can't quite help wanting to figure out why this man died. And is there actually anything of worth in this unit that she's purchased? She's not ready to let it go, and she ends up partnering with another cleaner named Nick. I forgot to say, Opal is also a mage, or she doesn't practice magic the same way that other mages do. She is more instinctive rather than, by the book, follow the proper procedures, that sort of magic. Something that this book did really well that I enjoyed was her partner, Nick. I can tell that he likes her. He has a crush on her. Just from the way he interacts with her, Opal doesn't get it. Even at the end of this book, there's not a, like, she does not know that he likes her. But you, the reader, do by how he reacts to things that deal with her. And I like that we're getting that slow burn, or at least I'm assuming it's going to be a slow burn of a relationship. I like the concept that the Detroit Free Zone is a goddess. I guess I forgot to say, in this world, it's in the future, but magic has come back into the world. So now you have magic and technology that people are integrating together. And so the Detroit Free Zone is a has a goddess as their city. And I liked the world building elements of how that would work. I'm looking forward to reading more in this world. I know that this is her second series in this world, but this is the first one I picked up and I gave this five stars. Okay, so next I read 
Tower of Mud and Straw by Yaroslav Baruskov, and this was another novella. But I read it off of the website of the mag- magazine. I was interested in the story because it is one of the Nebula nominations, and sadly I could not get into it. My The note I made about this story was, the characters just didn't interest me, and the structure of the story made me want to go to sleep. Honestly, that really does sum it up. I don't remember the main character's name. He was a disgraced prime minister who his queen sent him to oversee this tower that was being built. And it's supposed to be some sort of defense tower against another country's airships. I mean, that so far sounds interesting, right? And then you get to the tower and the bickering and the assassination attempts and a character being more mysterious than thou kind of set up. It didn't work for me. Obviously, it worked for many people because it was nominated, but it doesn't work for me. So I DNF'd it for low intrigue. I then read the short story, Burn or the Episodic Life of Sam Wells is a Super, and this is by A.T. Greenblatt. And I really enjoyed this, actually. This is about a world where people have powers, and those with powers have been persecuted, and so they're trying to form superhero teams to help the community and most of the teams are just doing community service work there's really only one team that is out fighting evil per se and sam has discovered the ability that he can combust his head and his hands will burst into flame and he wants to be on the team because he has lost all of his friends the team after seeing his interview are like, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you just don't want to move out to the country and just live a quiet life? And he's like, no, I I want to be part of the super team. And they're like, okay, well, what were you doing before your powers? He goes, oh, well, I was an accountant. Okay, great, we'll take you. And he's like, wait, what? Well, they want him for their accountant. And he joins the office staff. At first, he's really downtrodden. He really wants to be on that team until he gets taken out to help in the field. And his job is to help keep people back so far, the people who are watching the event happen. And he sees how those with superpowers are like any other person. They make mistakes. They do their best in difficult times. And he sees a bystander get hurt because they did not respect the boundary the border and the super that their power influenced that is really upset by this and it really turns Sam's perspective of this super team actually has very complicated optics. Sure they have these powers but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're wishing them on other people and I don't want to ruin how this short story ends. Go look it up but I did give this four stars. Next I finished Legendborn by Tracy Dion and I have a review that I did recently so I'm gonna link that here to the video and in that video I went into more spoilers of things that I liked and didn't like about the book. This book follows Brie four months after her mother dies While she's still grieving, she goes to early college, which means she's a teenager at a university working on college credit. And while on campus, she sees magic happen and doesn't forget it like everybody else who has been spelled to forget it. And she keeps pushing and she gets introduced to the Order of the Round Table, which is made up of the descendants of Arthur and his knight. And they are still to this day fighting demons. As she meets them, She starts to have memories resurface, and she realizes that how she thinks her mother died, something's been hidden away. And because of the way it's hidden away in her mind, she believes that it is attached to this order. And so she's investigating to find out if they had anything to do with her mother's death. This book ticked all the right boxes for me. It wasn't perfect, but the things that it did well, it did exceptionally well, to the point that I gave it five stars. And I look forward to rereading it here in the future and reading the next book when it comes out. Then the next book I finished was Command Decision by Elizabeth Moon. I believe this is book four in the Vada War series where we're following Kailara Vada. As she continues to try to find allies and partners to help her defeat the pirate menace that is in her universe. And I gave this one four stars. Something I really liked about this book was characters that you met in the first one have been have resurfaced and you get more context for who they are and why they do things. 
and I thought that was really fun. Okay, second to last is The Three Body Problem by Xian Liu. This is the first book in his trilogy, and I know it's been pretty popular. I've heard people talk about it before. It's about aliens, and it is a first contact story. I like getting to read a science fiction story set in a different country with a different cultural background, and so this book is set in China, and while it has some international players, the main characters that you follow are Chinese, and it uses real-world history to show the influences of how these characters act and why they act certain ways. And I think this is a very interesting concept, but overall the structure of this book didn't work for me. I'm not a fan of mixed media structure, and this would go from narrative to then here is an investigation report, and it would just jar me out of the story. I was very interested in the beginning when we're following Yi Wenji, and then all of a sudden it breaks and it goes to Wang. And for me, the most boring parts of this book were about the three-body game, the game that has given the book its title. I didn't care about. I wanted to go back to the first part of the book. And it does bring both characters together and ties them in, and you do find out what happens to Yuenji, but a lot of the impact is taken away by not getting to see it. Or at least that's for me. Now again, this is written in a different style, and it could be that I'm just not enjoying it because I'm not used to this style of writing. I think that the translation was excellent. I think I didn't like it just because of the structure. I do plan to finish the series, and maybe by the end of the series I'll like the structure better if it continues the same way. I don't know. Again, this was a first contact. I think the next one will get more of an invasion. I'm not certain. And so I gave this book three stars. So the last thing I finished in the month of May, on the 31st of May as well, was Defect by Nino Cipri. And this is the second book in the Litten Barled universe, or second novella. This is more of a companion novel because you aren't getting a continuation of Ava's story. This is about another character who was mentioned briefly at the beginning of the first one. Like, Ava was going into work because Derek was sick. This is a story about Derek and how he has never been sick once in his life. He's a model employee, but his behavior is just off enough that the other employees aren't very sure about him. And so this book actually starts with him not feeling very well and going to work. And Jules, who we meet in the first book, is like, dude, you're sick. Go home. And as he just continues to get worse, she finally forces him to call the boss and be like, he can't work leave, which then sets up the next day Ava coming into work. So Derek is now feeling better. He goes to work, finds out he missed the whole wormhole incident, which he's very sad about because he was really interested in going through a wormhole. You know, he read about it in his employee handbook and he was very curious to have that occurrence happen. His boss is still not very happy with him and instead of having him listed as taking a sick day, she wants it just to be a personal day because with the wormhole the day before, corporate has come into the store and wants to do a full inventory and is, you know, if you have ever been in a manager position in retail, you know the pain of having management come into your store, especially after there's been an issue. Derek has to meet with the supervisor and the supervisor asks him to help the team that's going to come in to do inventory. And I'm going to leave it there because that's where the twist comes in. And again, I really enjoyed this world and it was fun. And I want to know after the story what's going to happen with Derek and what's happening with Ava. I hope Cipri continues writing more. I don't know if they are wanting to or if that is the plan, but I am very interested. And so if they do, I will definitely be picking it up and I gave this five stars as well. So that has been my May wrap up. If you have read any of these books, please let me know down below. If any of these books are interesting to you and you now want to read them, also let me know. And if you would like to continue to see me talking about science fiction and fantasy, please hit that subscribe button and press the bell notification button because I do not upload on a definitive schedule at this point in time. Thank you and have a great day.